hey, Jay, how you doing? Yeah. So it looks like you've gone through and taken a look at some of the other iterations that have been posted. And that's smart. I mean, it's there. It's an open form. You might as well use it to your benefit, right? We can take that a step further. And, and I would say just go right ahead and Where'd you go? Here you go. Go ahead and review some of the videos that are are in the posts before yours. It's it's all you know. It's all fair game, right? I mean, you might as well use it if you're if you have posts before you and there's there's comments on those posts. You might as well use those comments to your benefit, right? I think this is a good start. It's a really good start. Got some reflections here. I think that has to do with the hard lead right there. Did you use a flash? Sure, it looks like you might have used a flash on that one. See some reflections there. A little bit of smudging in the paper down here. A little bit of wrinkled paper. Remember, craft counts here, so you want to be as neat and clean as you possibly can. All right, I think it's a good start. Now, what we have here is just a couple of areas I think need improvement. For the most part, I think that the, the depiction of the letter forms is, is really super accurate. Watch that variable width stroke right there. And your A, see how much more thinner it is right there. And same thing with the N right there. That's a lot thinner as that shoulder reaches that, that uh, vertical stem right there. I'm talking about that area right there. You want to depict that as well. Um, for the most part, you're, you're okay. So you take a look at your baseline. So your letters aren't sitting on your baseline, right? The B is sitting on the baseline, but the baseline kind of goes down like this. So that A is not sitting on the baseline. You want your letters to sit on the baseline. As a matter of fact, the curved letter should come just up just a pixel or I shouldn't say a pixel because this is manual just a, just a hair below the baseline curved letter form should also come just a hair above the mean line or in a capital letter situation a hair above the, the cap line the reason that's called overshoot and that's an optical relationship that, that otherwise if it doesn't it appears that curved letter letter forms appear a little bit smaller than than their counterparts now that's called overshoot okay so what I would I, I also see there's no mean line here that's drawn. So what I would recommend is this. When your second iteration, start with a baseline. Start your baseline. Make sure it is perfectly level. Okay. Then you you, you can establish your mean line by using a, one of the lowercase letters. Place a lowercase letter on the baseline, accounting for overshoot, and then just mark the mean line. All right. And then establish the mean line. Then do the same thing with the cap B. Place the cap B. Trace it. Or you don't even have to really do any tracing yet. Just find out where the cap B would sit on the baseline. And just make a little mark where the, the cap line is and then make sure that is perfectly level. Your baseline, mean line, and the cap line should be perfectly level and perfectly parallel with one another. Okay, so we've covered um, the shapes of your letters. We've covered baseline, mean line, cap line. Let's talk about spacing. Letter spacing is important because every time we see a break, a space in a, 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 a a word or a sentence, it indicates to us that there should be a break there, right? So if we have unusual spacing in a, in a word, we automatically want to break at that space. For example, if there's a space right here between N and A, we don't read banana, we read banana, okay? And that slows down reading, that slows down retention. So we definitely want to pay attention to these, 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 these this ample, uh, I'm sorry, this expeditious letter spacing. Now here's the formula, all right? Um, what you want to do is you want to make the, this, this volume between the letters appear to be equal in each letter combination. So right now, as we can see right here, now, you, you, don't, you, you can ignore that, uh, that open counter for the, the lowercase a. Just pretend, just draw a line right there, okay? Okay, and then you can see that the space between this area here right now, I'm talking about between the baseline and the mean line, this space is, it seems to hold a lot more volume than this space here. Right. It's because it's of the different shapes, that extra added area right there, right there, that extra added area caused by the curved letter forms. So um, intuitively, we would close that down to reduce the volume. Conversely, over here, where we have two straight letter forms, we want to increase that volume to make it appear to be the same volume as this. So we're going to increase those two, the space between those two straight letter forms. So the, the, the formula is this. The most narrow space is going to reside between two curved letter forms, the B and the A. And those are the only curved letter form combinations in this, in this word. Okay, so that would be the closest letter spacing. The next closest letter spacing would be combinations that have a, a straight letter form and a curved letter form right here and here. Okay, so again, most narrow is two curved letter forms, followed by the next most narrow, which would be the uh, uh, combination between a straight and a curved letter form. And then the widest space should be between two straight letter forms. Now, those spaces shouldn't be noticeable. You shouldn't be able to look at this and go, oh, yeah, that space between the A and the N is definitely greater than the space between the B and the A. It shouldn't be that noticeable. It should be subtle, but the volume of the area between the letter forms should be appear to be very consistent. In other words, you had a pitcher of water. And again, you'll have to just ignore this open counter. 
for the, the lowercase a. But what you want to do is you want to pretend, okay, so you draw a line right there. So you pour a pitcher of water in there. And how long would it, how long would it fill up, uh, up, up to, the, to the mean line? All right. And then take the same amount of water and make sure that it fits in this area right here. All right. So those are some really good tips to get you going for your final iteration. Now, Jay, if you have any questions at all, please let me know if I can make any clarifications. My only other comment is this um, vertical stem of the cat B is on a diagonal. See how it kind of slants this way. You want to make sure that's a true vertical. All right. Fantastic. Jay. And like I said, any questions at all, please let me know. Thank you.